Oh yeah, uh, you know, it's the home of Danny Johnson and uh, Tim has very good talent, you know, good speed. I think his best football is ahead of him. Heady football player, tough, you know, got great cover skills and we just wanted to improve our depth at cornerback. You know, we got some returning guys that are pretty good, but I like competition and I, I think these guys will come in and, and compete for time. He's listed as an athlete. Can you see him probably playing corner? Yes, he'll play corner. Does he return kicks like that? He does return kicks, uh, punts, kickoffs, so definitely will be a, a weapon. You know, we lost Jaleel Richardson, so to have another guy that, that's able to do that, uh, you got you to gotta be happy about that. Um, did you, uh, is there any need you wanted to fill or any numbers that didn't quite add up the way you wanted or did it all pretty much fall into place? Well, I think it fell into place. You know, I think offensively we were turning a lot more players than we were defensively. So we were able to, to pick some guys up. And we had some guys out that are returning players that didn't play last year that that add to that depth as well, that creates that competitive edge. And, you know, when you get a Daniel Brown back and Anthony Mosley back, you don't necessarily have to have freshmen to come in and play right away. So uh, I'm really pleased at, at meeting our needs. I thought we did a good job of that. And overall, I think it'll it be a good class, but it's yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other guys who were ineligible last year, you mentioned Brown and Mosley. Are you expecting others back as well? Well, yeah. I mean, I think we'll have most of those guys back. Uh, I think we're talking about uh, three or four guys that, you know, that could really help our football team. Uh, we're excited about. And if things go well, you know, paperwork, you know, uh, putting some stuff in to try to get some guys some waivers and stuff. If that goes well, you know, we could get back three or four guys, you know, but we're excited about having the opportunity. If we get them back, it would be a plus. If not, I think we handle those needs in recruiting. Um, did you, is there anybody who, who's definitely not going to be back? Who has eligibility remaining? Uh, at this point, I I wouldn't know. You know, I think it'll be a it's gonna be an ongoing deal. You know, just trying to make sure that we do necessary paperwork to maybe file a waiver and try to get some of these guys back. Uh, so, a number of guys uh, took to social media to pledge their commitment to Southern University, which is unusual at this level. What does it say about you and your staff and your recruitment process that a number of these guys when they came in were sold on being Jaguars? Well, I think it's the relationships. I think as coaches, you got to build relationships. And I think out of the 20, 27 guys that, that we were able to to get, uh, 12 of those guys were early offer guys that we offered early and were able to stay on back in the spring. So whenever you can do that and get half those guys that you were recruiting and hold on to them for that long period of time, I really think that makes a big difference in your program. And then when they come on campus and, and you build relationships, you know, that's really what it's all about. You know, I think as a salesman, you got to have something that you sell. Uh, football take care of itself. Uh, our program take care of itself. You know, I think our academics take care of itself. But you have to have something that's a deciding factor. And I really think it's our staff and the people skills that our coaches have that really is a design factor in getting young men to choose something. Well, I think we waited on one kid, really, that we, we thought was going to be on the fence, and uh, that was Big Joe over at Plaquemine. Uh, Joe just had, a, had us on the fence, you know, he on the switch hats, and, you know, but at the end of the day, his mom called me and said, you know, Coach, we're going to be, we're going to be Jaguars. I was excited about that and, and very pleased with him joining us. Uh, Coach Germany, the staff, Coach Barry, you know, they did a great job in recruiting this young man and really showing him that this is the place he needed to be. And we was happy when that fax came across the line. And, you know, anytime you get your lineman, I think that created excitement because, you know, Tademy, shoot, Georgia State had been calling him all the way up until, you know, they couldn't call no more. And for him to stay with us and, and choose Southern, we were pleased with that, with that also. It didn't come in at 7 this morning, but once we got it around, I believe around 10, we was happy to have it. You got a couple of guys who were, Well, I think both of those guys were early offer guys, you know, so we recognize their talent ahead of time. And, you know, there's definitely some talent over there. And you know, I think we inked five guys from Texas, uh, 13 of our guys from Louisiana, and three from Georgia. 
uh, one from Wisconsin, North Carolina, South Carolina. So that tank of gas is holding up. We're trying to take care of the state. You know, most of our players are from here, and I think that's that's a testament to our coaches, you know, especially with some of the things we have to deal with on, on the negative issues. But to be able to land 13 guys in state and that are the uh, caliber players that we got, I'm only, uh, I can only be appreciative of the effort of these coaches. You, uh, when you tweeted out Brinson, you said that he was the longest, he was committed longer than anybody else. Do you remember when he was? He committed in June. Well, yeah, he committed in June. That goes back to my Tallahassee ties. Uh, his uncle was a head coach uh, at FAMU High School. I recruited that area, and as soon as he committed, he, he called me and, and, and told me that, you know, you get my nephew. I told him no better place for him to go play. So uh, those relationships really help you in, in comforting young men's minds and comforting their family minds when they're a long way away from home. What's his uncle's name? Ira Reynolds. No, nah, we're we're pretty much done. Yeah. You mentioned something yesterday. You like the uh, the length of the guys. You you got a lot of big guys in this class. Was that uh, a priority, or did it just kind of work out that way? Well, a tall guy can grow into a big guy. You know, uh, a short guy grow into a stout guy. So you have to decide which way you want to go. But I think the more tall guys you got, the more guys you can get that are six four, two thirty five. They have the potential of becoming 6'4", 265, 275. And, you know, you end up being a bigger football team than when you started. So a lot of these guys go have the opportunity to put on some weight. We're excited about that, uh, especially those, those tight end slash defensive ends. And it's about becoming a bigger football team. You know, we don't want big guys. Normally, we're not going to get 6'4", 275-pound defensive linemen when they come out of high school. If they can play, all the big boys are going to eat them up. So... You have to do a great job of getting guys that are 6'4", 235, that, are, that can run. And we like speed. You know, we don't have big defensive guys. As long as I'm probably going to be the head coach here, we won't recruit big defensive guys. You know, teams don't line up and run the ISO. So they spread you out, sideline to sideline. Guys got to be able to run. So we sort of tailor what we do on defense uh, after that speed mentality. We want guys that can run.